The suspension is a vital part of an F1 car as it bridges the chassis and its four points of contact with the ground. In basic terms, the perfect suspension system means that a car can utilize as much grip as its tires can yield. In F1, there are two types of suspension systems, one consisting of the push rod and the other the pull rod. In this animation, we're going to explore the differences between the two and why a team might pick one over the other. Shared elements. Let's first have a look at the elements of a suspension system that are out in the airflow. Both push rod and pull rod systems share the following components. Wishbones. These can be split into the upper and lower wishbones and they connect the chassis to the wheels. They also house tire tethers, which prevent the tire flying off in case of an accident. Track rods, also known as the steering arm, they connect the steering rack to the wheels, transmitting the steering input of the driver. The next element is the push or the pull rod. A push rod is mounted from the upper part of the chassis down to the lower part of the wheel hub, whereas the pull rod is basically the push rod in reverse. In this setup, the rod runs from the lower half of the chassis up to the upper part of the wheel assembly. Both systems are connected to a rocker hidden inside the chassis. When a wheel moves up in a pushrod configuration, the rocker is pushed inwards, hence the name pushrod, as opposed to the pull rod where the rocker is pulled outwards, thus the name pull rod. Strengths and weaknesses The pushrod is generally easier to access as the springs and dampers are mounted higher up in the car, but because they're mounted higher, the center of gravity is also raised, which gives the pull rod a slight advantage. Another potential benefit of a pull rod setup is that it's closer to being angled horizontally. This could in turn help smooth out some of the turbulence caused by the front wing, as it's located closer to the path of air that has to be cleaned. Configuration Historically, many F1 cars have push rods at the front and pull rods at the back. This is largely because push rods offer more flexibility at the front and pull rods allow for a cleaner aero package at the back. But there are exceptions to that rule. For example, both Red Bull and McLaren utilized the pull rod at the front of their 2023 cars and push rods at the rear. As mentioned before, push rods are mounted higher in the chassis, which in the case of rear suspension means that the dampers and torsion bars can be mounted above the gearbox casing. This frees up space underneath and gives more freedom when designing the floor and diffuser. The extra room is handy with ground effect cars that rely heavily on the underside to generate downforce. Who uses what? In 2023, half of the teams utilized pushrod rear suspension, which signals quite a divide between different aero concepts and priorities. This is quite unusual as in recent history, teams typically converge to one type of configuration. Ultimately, which configuration is better is really tough to judge. There are several important factors to consider, such as the aero and the packaging constraints of a given car. It will be very interesting to see if other teams will follow Red Bull and McLaren with the front pull rod and rear push rod approach as this seems to be working quite well for both those teams. So that's a quick breakdown between a push rod and a pull rod. If you have other questions about F1 that you would like me to cover in future animations, feel free to let me know in the comments. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.